Hey everybody, this is Pete, and in this video, I want to give you a good example of how to use the intersection operation when building an extrusion. It's kind of a quasi-mysterious operation that not a lot of people use, and frankly, there's not always a lot of good reason to use it, but when working with a client, I recently came across a scenario where it fit perfectly. So this is a central design model where I am crafting an airplane fuselage and I've been working on some curved structural members, some paneling, but I also have some cross supports. And these cross supports are gonna be cut at some angle to match the curvature of the fuselage. So this actually is a great example of where that intersection could be very useful. So I'm gonna go over to a new part. I'll derive in that design model. And of course, when we're deriving things in, we only need to bring the stuff in that we need. So I only need the floor design sketch. I don't need the work geometry in this case. And let's take a look at some of the parameters. So we would want to, not the panel, not the section. Yeah, the frame structural width and the member width. I think that's what we all want. So perfect. So I'll go ahead and hit okay there. And here is our design model. So what we're gonna do is create a section that represents the structural member profile, and then we're gonna have it more automatically cut at that angle. So go ahead and create a plane, normal to this axis, right at that endpoint. that'll be perfect. And then we'll create a very basic shape. So I'll go ahead and just project this corner point We'll even look at that sketch plane just to make it a little bit easier. There we go. And the way I've designed this, it's gonna to go towards the right here. So I'll just go ahead and we're gonna keep it simple today. Create a rectangle like so. And we know that this is going to be the height of the shape. So we just have to adjust this value. And that's gonna be one of those parameters. That would be the frame structure width and there we have it so to set the height of the shape well we're just gonna whoops first project the point here and then we can make that coincident to that point so there's our definitional shape and then we can also offset this for whatever tube thickness we want and i know in an airplane you probably wouldn't use a tube but this just saves a little bit of time creating that structural shape so finish the sketch, we can extrude the shape. It's gonna extrude the, the wall and we can extrude it too, and you can use a point. So we can extrude it that entire length. So that would be the structural shape there, but you can see to get it the full size, we uh, use this plane to that other endpoint. Now we're gonna use that intersect. So if I extrude one more time, but this time I have that exact profile I extracted from the central design. This is where we would use intersect. And we could go all of it and that would capture the structural shape, but cut to that exact miter. So we go ahead and hit okay. And there is your shape. And the best part is that will adapt. So if we go back to the central design file, and we were to change some of the characteristics. So let's say we increase the height of that shape. So let's see, that would be the frame member depth. Let's make it 12. Uh, not much for cargo space there, but you can see that increases the height a little bit. So that would of course change the angle. And if we go back over to our part, see that it will adapt. And that's the best part of doing that type of a design is now it's linked back to the top model. So it's not every day that we would use the intersect operation, but this is a really good example of how we can use this in conjunction with our top-down design techniques. So I hope you found this helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments, and have a blessed day.